I am out here in Mecca, California, cultural capital of the world. I used to actually live on this day grow and I used to move palm trees around here, but you already know that if you watch the episode called Who is Palmero? Uh, episode link right up there with that eye card is popping up. Your life isn't going to be the same unless you watch that. Anyway, Palmero, uh, without giving you a spoiler, is the namesake behind Palmero Junk Pile Guitars. By the way, this is not a Palmero Junk Pile Guitar. Because if it was, I would be able to play it and it would sound wonderful. Anyway, I lived on this ranch. It's February right now, so the temperature's about, oh, 75, 80. But in the summertime, it would be 115, 117, 120, 122. There'd be rattlesnakes all over the place, and uh, we'd be moving palms. But what happened to this ranch is they ran the interstate literally through my side yard again. That's in that episode. But it was so hot out here in the summertime. How hot was it? Well, it was so hot that you could take solder and a wire, and whatever you wanted to solder the wire to, it would stick without a gun, without a soldering iron. And so, mysteriously, with that lead in, this episode is called soldering. Now, we're going to get to work. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks or how I screwed up, if you want to call that tricks. But when I return at the end of the video, you're going to see me at a place that's even more remarkable than Mecca, California, and that is Slab City. So, I will see you then. <laughs> I swear I'm going to drill a hole in this thing and put a pickup on it. All right, before we get going here, I always forget. Let's get this, uh, you know, that slide out of Reuben Lacey's church can pile in the back. Um, hey, what do you see back here? Mississippi house, like maybe sun house. Like maybe I bought a bunch of these just in case you hipsters out there see what's going on here. Yeah, Mississippi makes trailer house tags are usually in pretty good shape because I don't know you don't really run a trailer house down the road at least not where I'm from I don't know but anyway let's get the housekeeping out of the way down at the bottom is a subscribe a like uh, notification get that out of the way I want to tell you about the music for this episode this is Wolf Records comes out of somewhere in Europe um, 50 years of Como Blues I just got this in it's beat up already you can tell I cracked the case and everything. This is going from vehicle to vehicle. But Wolf Records, 50 years of Como, Mississippi blues. You got everybody on here. You got Rainy Burnett, R.L. Boyce, Jesse May, Hemp Hill, um, and Fred McDowell. This is good. Get this. And I will give you a link below. Um, next, I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers. Been with me since day one. Andy Dobbs down in San Diego, California. I was excited. I got a letter from him the other day. Um, he's been building guitars, and his daughter finally came up with a logo for him, and I got one of the first stickers, Stick Man Guitars. Look at that. I love that. Andy Dobbs, keep an eye out for his work. Andy, again, you've been there since day one, buddy. Love you, man. All right, I've been going to do this episode for a little bit. I've got some new things to tell you, uh, but first off, I want to tell you that soldering uh, and wiring has always been a problem for me. Whenever the guitar doesn't sound right, there's a buzz. It always goes back to wiring and grounding and soldering. And look at that mess right there. Some of this stuff. I mean, that is a mess. That's some of my early work. I keep that around just in case something doesn't sound right. I can look at that and go, yeah, well, you did the soldering. But uh, my friend Tom Klein, subscriber Tom Klein in Springfield, Illinois, was watching my ground the strings video let me grab something here you know the one with this tape do not buy this tape and anything but bulk if you need to find out where just send me an email and I'll tell you but anyway he was talking about once you run that tape down your neck and put a screw in it where do you run the other end of that to and the answer is to the bottom of a potentiometer so I told him I'm gonna give you a shout out hey Tom Klein there's your shout out um, Oh, by the way, the, the, the link to that grounding, episode, grounding the Strings episode is in there. It's got a chunk from uh, Reverend Peyton in there. You'll like that. But we're going to um, 
I'm going to show you a little trick here where everything you ground, look how many things are grounded there. It would be easier to do it with one ground wire coming off. You should just run from this lug to the jumper up to here. Then you attach everything to this and set all this mess going on here. And I'll show you how to do that. But anyway, Tom, thanks for the question. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. And I'm going to catch up to speed on some of my mess of soldering and some of the new stuff I got that makes it really simple. So let's get to work. All right. Now, um, I've done episodes about how to wire a piezo and how to wire a coil. They're up there where that eye is, one of them's popping up right about now and the other one will pop up. i got to wait a couple seconds or they dance all over each other. The other one will be popping up there. Um, it, it'll show you how to do this and what lug goes to what and all that. But... I'll tell you what, when I started, look at this mess. I got all these different kinds of wires. I'll be at the auto parts store or yard sale or whatever. Anyway, this, this turned into a mess. So, you know what? I just decided to listen to some of those good mentor to me, Darren Duke. So, always told me, dude, get that pre-tinned pushback wire. It gives you a good vintage look. And it's pre-tinned, and you know what that means. You're soldering, so there's no wire strip, and you just pull that back like that. Can you see that? And I bought it in three different colors. So I use this for ground wire. I used to use green auto parts store wire. But anyway, I just push it back like that. So I got black, white, and yellow. So what I typically do is I'll run the white color, the hot wires, to my coils and piezos. And then I'll use the wire, the yellow wire, to run the hot wire um, to the jack. So this has worked out really well for me. Um, if you need to know where to get this and you don't, there's some guy out of Ventura, California, that sells it in bulk. Um, I think I paid, anyway, send me an email. I don't want to give his price structure away. But it's, it, it's, it's real easy to use. You just push this back, and it's pre tin so it solders really well. So get the wire out of the way first. Next thing, I'm a firm believer in shrink wrap. I don't like stuff jumping across and shorting each other. And if you look here, I just cut short pieces of shrink wrap before I solder and slide them up over here out of the way. If they're too close, it'll start to melt when you do your soldering work. And then when, the, when you've got the joint soldered, you just slip that down, take a lighter to it. But I'm a firm believer in shrink wrap. Next, three important things. Number one, get yourself a sponge. It's got to be wet. This is sitting there while you're soldering because every time you're done uh, making a connection, you just put the tip of that on there. That's where all these burn marks are from. And it'll clean your soldering tip. Before you get started, you know what a file is and you know what emery cloth is. Get a roll of this. You'll see this at yard sales when they're cleaning out somebody's garage. Get some of this and make sure your soldering tip is clean because if it's not, you start having problems, you get cold joints and everything else. So once again, sponge, emery cloth, file. Now let's talk a little bit about solder. Okay, um, use rosin core solder. I mean, what are you going to do with this? Number one, the soldering gun you're going to have to use to get this to, to start to melt is the size of a tank. And then you got this stuff that's really tiny. I don't have good luck with that. It flows nice and everything, but a little bit uh, too small. I like this 0 .040 size right here. I like it on this. I can just pull it back. I can kind of guide it uh, and do what I need to do. So, um, yeah, don't be using this big clunky solder, okay? That's going to fail you. Okay, have you ever tried to solder something? You, you know, you guys sitting here like this, need an extra hand or something. Do yourself a favor. Just get a block of wood like this. Take graduated drill bit. I like those. You know, the ones that have the taper. The holes tapered, see. So I can put this here. And when I push down, that taper will hold that perfectly. So I don't have to worry about this moving around and stuff. And I can bend the tab down, put my soldering gun here wherever I want it. And, um, and... and piece of wood works great. Anything you want to do to stabilize your work. All right, let's talk about <laughs> a place where I made a lot of mistakes, and that's soldering irons. Um, you know, there's been times I thought I was real tricky, like look at this one. Nice little small tip. Everything looks good. Guess what? 
it's battery operated so unless I'm out slab city or something where there's no electricity it's probably gonna work out real well for me oh it works but I'll tell you what it doesn't have enough lead and it's to melt <laughs> it might work with this little tiny stuff but it certainly is gonna do anything with this you end up with cold joints and stuff. I mean, this is probably something a guitar tech can carry around or something like that just in case. But it's certainly not um, what I want to use now. So uh, I've gone through a number of different soldering irons. I fell for the ones that were lighted and stuff like this. But I just got this one. I love this configuration. Uh, if you send me an email, I'll tell you what it is and where I got it. But you'll notice here that instead of having a screw up here and you're changing the tip out up here, you change out this whole thing by turning this loose, it's threaded, and then you just put a new tip on there and it works good. Now this one, if you keep it clean, again, you got this, you got this if you need it, and then when you're using it, you can hear it sizzling. Hear that? Anyway, it'll keep it clean, and you do that, it's real easy to set it down between uh, the connections you're making. Now what I like about this one is check this out. It goes from th almost 400 degrees all the way up to about 850 degrees and you can tell how hot it is because that light will go off when you're at where you need to be. It's kind of like a baking. Hey did you see that episode engine bread? There's a link up there in case you haven't. But anyway, so you can turn this puppy up. And I'll tell you what, it will melt solder. So I like this one. Again, if you want to know where I got it. And it was cheap. I mean, it was pretty cheap. Uh, and, and I got it here. Um, I, I should just set up a page and list all my stuff. I've been swearing I'm going to do that. But anyway, if, if you need to know about this. But I really like this one. I've given up the rest of them and gone strictly to this one. Um, I will tell you that. I've always got a block of wood here to set this down on. You don't want to burn your stuff. But while I'm ill prepared here and trying to open up this bag, I want to show you that this one comes with different replacement tips. You can get a, this one that's beveled. You got one that's flat. And then my favorite, of course, is the one with the pointed tip. That's the one I like. So I like this solder gun. Now, let's get to what we're doing. Now, I almost forgot. These Camacho boxes I use are really thick. The tops of them are really thick. Sides are thick. That affects the jacks and the potentiometers you're going to use. So if I use this, I'm going to end up having to take go into the back and use a, a Forstner bit to indent this. What a hassle. So instead, I use these long shaft potentiometers. It's quite the difference. Anyway, whatever box you're using, you wouldn't want this one on a thin top box because you get a lot of leverage somebody hits it the whole box shatters and then you don't want to have to reinvent the world by using this one so know what you're doing with your potentiometer shafts all right so i'm going to set this short shaft one aside I might be able to use that for a coffee can or something like that later and i'm going to put this right here now i got the i got the lugs pointed to the left side i mean i want to point this out again the episode I card up there click on those and you'll see how to wire a piezo and how to wire a coil but anyway this first one when this is pointed left or nine o'clock position that's 12 this is nine you might want to write that stuff on the block but this first one is going to go to the hot wire on your coil the, the middle one's going to go to the hot wire on your jack and then this one here is the ground so what we're going to do is we're going to run a little jumper wire from here right to there and then I'm going to show you a trick instead of having to J jump on and try to tack down the hot uh, the ground coming from the coil the ground coming from the um, jack the ground coming from the tape on the neck uh, connected to the leg bone connected to the grounding strings bone we're just going to run a little short jumper wire from here to here and leave it stick out like that and then all those other wires can attach here instead of this mess I showed you before all right, again, first thing I'm going to do is run that little file over there. Make sure that's nice and clean. Listen to that. See how that cleaned up right away? You just keep this wet. Look at how 
clean that is ready to go first thing i'm going to do here is take a piece of this ground wire um and i'm going to cut it like this now so that's pretty easy because remember you just push this back you don't have to strip it but i want to bear a little piece of this right here because this is going to jump from right there to right there and i'm going to i'm i'm just going to take my strippers and i'm going to not cut it i'm going to pull the cloth back a little bit and let me do that because the last time I tried to do that with the camera and I knocked the camera over. So I'll see you in a minute. All right. You see how that pushes back? And then I take this and I strip that. I can push that all the way back. Now, look, this goes up and down. I can bear as much of it as I want, as little of it as, as I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this end lug down here. I'm going to solder this on here like so. And then I'm going to lay this on here. I'm going to solder that right there, and then that leaves me this wire to do everything. So let's watch me solder. Okay, you notice I bent this lug down, and I put a kink in that wire. And I'm going to put that like that. Smash it down. I can take my wires, strippers, flatten it out like that. Touch that. Oh, that's good and hot. And I just set this up here. I don't set it right over where I want to, but I just... Look at that. There we go. Easy money. I'm going to leave it sit there. I'm not going to move it uh, because if this moves while it's cooling off or whatever, if it's not shiny, it's going to be a cold joint and that will affect how things ground. So there it is. Looks good. Instead of burning myself, I'm going to bend this back up. Usually I do this one last because I get these out of the way. And when I put those wires on there, remember, I always shrink wrap them so they end up looking like that. But now I'm going to take this wire here, I'm going to bend it this way. And you see, because I've got that wire stripped out there, I'm just going to touch that down like so and tack that on there. And I only got one wire up here instead of 15 of them in that mess. So let me tack this down again. My little piece of wood here comes in handy. Remember, always this between everyone. I don't care getting the habit. Sponge is pretty cheap. You're not going to go broke buying it. And of course, I got to put some solder on the bottom of the potentiometer. Ooh, that's nice and hot. It's melting good. There we go. All right, I got my wire strippers. I can hold that. And I just take this, push this down. Watch that solder get hot. As soon as it gets shiny, pick the gun up, let it cool a little bit, bingo, there it is. Nice. I don't have to solder anything else on there. I can just, look at that, push that back, yep, there's the end of it. It's a little bit clumpy there now because I pushed some back for the top of the potential, but there we go. I attach everything to that real simple. All right, guys, straight out of North Mecca. You got the Slab City entrance, the Slab City house band. On two of my guitars, the coffee can, and the Mr. Airplane Man guitar. Hey, take it away. I'm out here at the end of my day, at the end of my adventure, and I am sitting at the yard shack to Slab City doing my first uh, attempt at busking. You can tell it's kind of dead out here, but we'll see what happens. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Okay, it's like getting dark and I made a killing. It's about time I retire and go to doing this full time. I can double dip, I can get my government retirement and do this. I mean, I think some of these people are pretty loaded because um, they said that I sound good and y'all know better than that. So hey, hey, that's enough. The film crew is freaking out back there. Put the weed down. I know we're in California and everything, but anyway, I will see y'all next time.